Okay, in this video, um, I kind of had a long-winded explanation prepared for this, um, but what I think I'll do is I'll split this into two parts. I'll do one video on fracturing, on what I think, the what's going on with the fracturing on long flakes, and then a separate video where I demonstrate how to make long flakes. And um, I'll begin by kind of defining what I think a long flake is. Uh, the length is greater than two times the width. So, uh, and sometimes those are called blades also. If a, if a flake exhibits those properties, you can call it a blade also. Um, but, you know, a lot of times when you remove a long flake from a, a workpiece, it doesn't stay together, so uh, the flake scar uh, will definitely exhibit these properties, but the, the flake itself might break up. Anyway, uh, I do have some artifacts, a couple here that have long flakes on them. Uh, the first one I have, this is obsidian, uh, is a blade core made in uh, Central America. Uh, uh, st they still haven't figured out what technology was used to make this, but I just want to show you the uh, the uh, blades removed from here, or the scars of the blades removed. It's really amazing. Um, but this type of technology is used on cores like this. It's not used on bifaces. So if you're dreaming of, you know, someday being able to make long flakes like this on a biface, uh, it probably won't happen. This type of technology doesn't pertain to what we're going to talk about here. So um, I'll discuss stuff like this a little bit later in a different video. Uh, here's another artifact that's closer to what I'm talking about that displays some flakes and some flake scars that are closer to what I'm going to talk about. Now, uh, this artifact has the longest flakes of any other that I have. I, uh, like I said, I don't have too many, but I do have some. And this has some long flake scars on it. The funny thing is, and I was going to kind of go over a certain aspect of making long flakes, uh, as as being um, you have to have a well prepared workpiece in order to run long flakes and that's not really true if you look at this one it's really kind of I don't know uh, wavy not really flat uh, f or straight edged it's kind of chaotic, but they were still able to run long flakes on this. And the last one here, or one of the, yeah, this is probably the last one because it took off part of the base, part of the stem. It ran all the way down and overshot. It took off one of these ears and it was probably discarded after that. And I'm not sure how the tip broke off. It might have broken off in the ground or whatever but that's the uh, one of the dangers of running long flakes is you know overshots but anyway uh, the point is you really don't need to prepare your, your workpiece all that well to run long flakes except for one aspect and that's the platform the uh, the platform is probably the most important uh, aspect in running long flakes other than the material and the tool you're using. It's the platform. It's not really your workpiece. As long as it's you know relatively smooth and convex it doesn't need to be perfect as you can see in this artifact here. This guy was able to run lots of long flakes on a pretty chaotic surface. Okay, so the platform is going to be your most important um, aspect on your workpiece, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, and I'll get into that in a, in a little bit. 
Uh, these are some bifaces, or this is a biface that I made that has a, some long flakes on it. And in order for me to run long flakes like this, I've got to blow apart or blow off a, a lot of the edge. It takes a, a pretty stout platform and a lot of material at the very beginning to run long flakes. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you're having trouble running long flakes, uh, look at your edges. If you're trying to, you know, run long flakes and you have real thin edges, obviously you're going to have some trouble. You've got to have a stout platform in most cases uh, with most stone to run long flakes. And uh, this will kind of give you a, a better illustration. This is totally unmodified. Uh, I think I may have brushed the edge a little bit on this so you, you can't, can't really see, but this one here is totally unmodified. I, I, this here is just a uh, a flake that I was thinning down a little bit and it has a punch mark here but you can kinda see how large or how big of a bulb of percussion that uh, was needed to remove this and this is really easy to flake material okay so Again, if you don't have a stout platform or a meaty platform or a platform that can handle it, you're really not going to get a long flake on most material. Okay, so I'll just go over a, a few points here. Um, the most important thing, I think, is the platform. Uh, two is the uh, material, and three is your your tool. Now, what happens with um, long flakes? Um, they don't have to stay together; they just have to travel. Um, the thing that you need when you start to apply your force is you need a, a stout platform or a strong platform but you also need to maintain contact and um, I've been trying to figure out a good way to describe that uh, and I think I come up come up with something you're gonna need uh, persistent um, I already forgot. Uh, persistent contact, let's say. Okay, you can't have this bouncing around on your platform. As you detach the flake, from here to here, this force has to be persistent. You've, it's got to maintain contact and the longer it maintains contact the more success you're going to have in running a long flake uh, you're going to need a you know inward force and of course you need a little bit of downward force to open the crack but most of your force is going to be directed inward and um, I don't know the exact fracture mechanics of this but I think there's a lot of shear involved. There's also uh, tensile strength uh, considerations but there's also shear which is the sliding force, the sliding motion. Um, so you need a lot of inward force to run these long flakes obviously. Uh, a lot of the videos and books will tell you to push inward really really hard and then slightly downward to, to uh, release a flake. But what they don't tell you often enough is that you have to maintain contact with that platform or persistent contact with that platform in order to detach these long flakes. So without going too much into the mechanics of how this works, uh, the thing to remember when uh, creating long flakes 
uh, I think the most important thing is persistent contact with the platform and that what that does is it allows the forces to remain acting on the flake long enough to detach a long flake because there is a there is a time involved in, tra in travel and it varies between different materials like glass it'll travel extremely fast uh, with tougher materials it's a little slower but it's still the travel is extremely fast but even even so there is a tendency to lose pressure or to lose force in that microseconds in detachment when it, when it opens up you lose force in there and that slight loss of force can just cause a very short flake um, so wrapping this up uh, uh, long flakes in my opinion um, have the best chance of success if you have persistent contact with the platform okay and uh, like I said I'll demonstrate that in another video uh, that's devoted solely to making flakes and I'll, I'll do that as you know in, in a demonstration instead of trying to write it out for you uh, and I, I may explain explain this better uh, later on when I, when I understand the physics better but I don't think the physics matter all that much I think what matters more is that you understand that there are forces that need to be persistently acting on the flake in order to uh, detach a long flake and make a make this long fracture okay all right that's it